endocrine system um, comprised of the pineal gland, pituitary, hypothalamus, pancreas, ovaries, testes, thyroid gland, parathyroid gland, gastrointestinal tract, thymus, and the adrenal gland. Wait, is that the hypothalamus? Sure is. Right over there. The hypothalamus regulates the secretion of hormones from the anterior pituitary gland by producing hormones such as corticotropin-releasing hormone, growth hormone-releasing hormone, gonadotropin-releasing hormone, and thyrotropin-releasing hormone. I don't know what that means. So let's say the thyroid needs to produce more calcitonin, one of the hormones it releases, because of high blood calcium. The hypothalamus will, will release the thyrotropin releasing hormone, which will trigger the anterior pituitary gland to release thyroid stimulating hormone, which will travel to the thyroid and trigger its cells to produce more calcitonin. Cool! Can we see the pituitary gland? Yep, it's right there, right underneath the hypothalamus. That balloon looking sac? Uh huh. Whoa, what does it do? Well, the anterior pituitary is under direct control of the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus releases its tropic hormones, which tells the anterior pituitary to secrete hormones that reach target cells and stimulate some response from them. How does the hormone get to the target cell? Hormones travel through the bloodstream, actually. They don't have glands of their own. Um, there are different types of hormones. There's peptide hormones, which act like ligands and bind to the receptor on the target cell. And once they bind, they trigger a signal transduction pathway. The receptor acts as a first messenger that triggers a response from a second messenger in the cell that eventually amplifies the response. Well, what's the response? Well, it could be anything from producing another hormone to turning on some genes from in the cell. Well, what hormone from the anterior pituitary does what? Well, the growth hormone travels to all the body cells and helps our body grow. And the adrenocorticoid hormone are crucial for human stress response. And it travels to the adrenal cortex. And um, it's actually a steroid hormone which could travel into the cell without a receptor. And um, the gonadotropic hormones for reproduction and sexual development. Then, what does the other side of the pituitary do? The posterior? Yep, the posterior. Actually, it stores some hormones that the hypothalamus produces, such as the antidiuretic hormone, which um, regulates water balance and blood pressure, and oxytocin, which helps in contractions and milk, pr milk production. Do you know why oxytocin is so unique? It's because it, it's the only hormone that works through positive feedback. Oh, so once you start having contraction, you, ha you have even more until the baby comes out? All other hormones are controlled through negative feedback, which means, like, for example, if, you have, if you're dehydrated, then antidiuretic hormone would be released so that your kidney reabsorbs more water, and um, then once you have enough water in your system, then antidiuretic hormone stops being released until it's normal. Hey, you see that thing in the center of the brain? That's the pineal gland. Whoa, that's super important for our sleep cycle, right? Yep, that's why we release the hormone melatonin, which is regulated by light and it helps you fall asleep when you're supposed to. Whoa, is that the thyroid gland right in front of the trachea? The thyroid gland actually releases um, thyronine and thyroxine and calcitonin. All the hormones are stimulated by the thyroid stimulating hormone, which is produced in the anterior pituitary, and it's another example of negative feedback. Ooh, I know what triiodothyronine does. It stimulates body oxygen energy consumption, thereby increasing metabolic rate. It also promotes protein synthesis. Very good, Carlos. Wait, but I know what thyroxine and calcitonin do. So, uh... Calcitonin is understood to play a role in regulating calcium levels in the body, but its exact function in humans remains unclear. 
Yes, true. However, it's thought to stimulate osteoblasts and thus bone construction by inhibiting calcium ions released from the bone, thereby reducing the blood calcium level. Good job with the thyroid, students! What are those bean-shaped things on top of the thyroid? Well, those are those four tiny glands that we call the parathyroid glands. They're in charge of controlling the blood calcium levels. Whoa, that's so cool. It has to secrete hormones, right? Well, of course. Parathyroid glands secrete a hormone known as parathyroid hormone, which raises the blood calcium levels in the body. The levels are increased by breaking down the bones and increasing the body's ability to absorb calcium and the kidney's ability to hold the calcium. There is more. Tell us. The parathyroid hormone is regulated by negative feedback. Additionally, there are calcium sensing receptors located on parathyroid cells. When calcium is elevated, the parathyroid cells begin to work. Negative feedback plays a role when there are high concentrations of calcium present in the body. Whoa, this place is cool looking. Yep, this is what we call the thymus. These two little things over here, they're located between the behind the sternum between the lungs. This produces thymosine. It's only active until puberty, right? Correct. Thymosin is the hormone of the thymus, right? Yes, it stimulates the development of disease-fighting T-cells. Throughout the childhood years, lymphocytes pass through the thymus where they are transformed into T-cells. Once T-cells have fully matured in the thymus, they migrate to the lymph nodes through the body and aid the immune system in fighting disease. The thymus gland is the only active until puberty, but its function is extremely vital to health. The more T cells there are, the less thymusin is produced, and the less T cells there are, the more thymusin is produced. Thus, thymusin also demonstrates negative feedback. I'm glad that Arnold's thymus is healthy. <laughs> uh huh. Ooh, where are we now? Well, we're on the pancreas now, right? That yellow thing underneath the liver. But what hormones does it secrete? The pancreas is actually a very important endocrine gland. It secretes insulin and glucagon. When glucose or sugar levels are too high in the blood, then insulin is produced to bring the sugar level down because insulin uptakes glucose from the blood and thus reduces the blood glucose levels. However, when blood glucose levels become too low, insulin production decreases and glucagon production increases. Glucagon breaks down glucose reserves to release glucose into the bloodstream and increases blood glucose levels. This is an example of negative feedback. Wow, I'm so glad I have a pancreas. Now what is this? Well, now we're on the adrenal gland. It's right on top of both of the kidneys. There's one on the left kidney and one on the right. What hormones does the adrenal gland secrete? The adrenal gland secretes cortisol and aldosterone. Cortisol increases blood sugar by producing glucose. Cortisol also suppresses bone formation. Aldosterone, on the other hand, regulates blood pressure by acting on the collecting ducts of the nephron, a functional unit of the kidney. Aldosterone also increases the reabsorption of water and ions in the kidney to increase blood pressure and blood volume. But how is it regulated? I was just about to get to that. Aldosterone is regulated by angiotensin. Angiotensin causes blood vessels to constrict, thus increasing blood pressure. It also controls, it's also controlled by the renin-angiotensin system. Renin is a hormone secreted from the kidneys as they respond to the changes in blood pressure and blood volume. The renin-angiotensin system acts as a, ho a hormone system to regulate blood volume. When blood volume is less, the kidney secretes renin. Cortisol is regulated by the hypothalamus and the adrenocorticotropic hormone, which is ACTH. ACTH is released by the body's response to stress and controls the production of cortisol by stimulating the adrenal gland, which is on top of the kidneys. 